The goal of today's project is adding a spindle encoder to a CNC retrofitted lathe to be able to thread again on that lathe. Now, not everything went the way it was supposed to, but in the end, I was able to thread about 50% of the time. In a couple of weeks, it'll be 100%. This encoder will feed positional information into Linux CNC, and Linux CNC then controls the uh, longitudinal feed rate. I'm going to attach it to a bracket like this, which mounts where uh, one of the change gear uh, brackets used to be. The encoder has a small timing pulley on it, and that will connect through a timing belt to another timing pulley. We'll need to increase the diameter of this bore and broach this timing pulley uh, to uh, mount it onto the spindle. Originally, this lathe had a big nut on the end that held all of the pulleys in place. And I changed that, removed that, and made the spider. Um, what a spider is, is if you have a shaft that's going through the bore, you can tighten these screws down and hold the shaft centered in the bore so it's not flopping around. Yeah, so the keyway is eight millimeter and the shaft is 40 millimeter. Right. To dislodge this gear, just uh, gently persuading the gear to move. I'm gonna need, there we go, 12 millimeter wide and our pulley is just a little bit over 11 millimeter. We don't have to bore this, just have to broach it. All right, so to broach it, we'll need to make a uh, broaching um, bushing. A slot needs to be cut that will guide the brooch. This is a C style brooch, so the width of that slot is 3 8 of an inch. But the depth of the slot is controlled by the diameter of the uh, bushing. I modeled the bushing as a circle of 40 millimeters, and the profile of the brooch as being two rectangles, one being 8 millimeters wide, that's the cutting portion, and the other rectangle being 3 8 of an inch wide, and that's the guide portion. Now everything's aligned to the 12 o'clock uh, point and to calculate the depth I measure from the apex to the bottom of the slot. Uh, this is a driven dimension uh, because of the constraint uh, that the cutting portion has to touch the uh, bushing and see as I change the diameter so does that driven dimension. So in this case the slot needs to be cut 15 millimeters deep from where I'll touch off and 3 eighths of, a mil, uh, 3 eighths of an inch wide. And I'll take uh, very shallow cuts as I'm uh, making this slot so that I can use a 3 eighths inch end mill. The broaching uh, is a really nice way to make a keyway. There is no play whatsoever to have clearance for this timing belt. Well, this bracket has to be cut. Some of the guys watching this will appreciate when I say that face shields are really important for grinding, but so is a good hat. This bracket was printed on a 3D resin printer, and resin printers are fantastic for getting great detail but the prints are brittle. Dimensionally, they're pretty good compared to the FDM printers that I've used. Uh, I can hit a, a dimension a lot easier on the resin printer. The 3D print helps me to see what I like and dislike.
cast iron is cool. I cut the bushing off of the resin 3D and I'm just going to slip it behind the encoder arm and see where we're at looking at the timing belt and seeing if it's centered on uh, the pulleys. The cap head screw goes through there and recesses into this feature. The encoder is recessed into this feature and then there are button head cap screws that are recessed behind the pulley and then the bushing goes on the back of the arm. A little bit of tension needs to be placed on the timing belt but the encoder won't tolerate much side load. I had planned to use a Nordlock washer, I think they're pretty interesting, but I used a regular split washer instead. The arm gets a little bit of tension on it as the split washer is tightened. Ah, that's beautiful. Since Linux CNC uses the index pulse of the encoder to start a threading operation, we can recut a thread as long as it's not removed from the spindle. And other than the last three passes or so, uh, there is no cutting, just as you would expect. That's really nice. Very little play, and that still turns on smoothly, easily. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. So this isn't entirely destroyed. I had a lot of trouble figuring out why this was happening. The threading operation would complete, but the threads didn't look quite right, and the nut wouldn't turn on. I have a 72 tooth pulley on the spindle and a 36 tooth pulley on the encoder. So for every rotation of the spindle, there's two rotations of the encoder. There's two index pulses per rotation of the spindle. So there's a 50-50 chance when the threading operation starts that it's going to start in the correct spot. That is the first spot that it started in, if it's a multi-pass thread operation or it's going to start 180 degrees out of phase. And when it starts on the other side, then it's going to split the previously cut thread. And you end up with a thread pitch, which looks like it's twice as fine as what you're going for, but it's actually a two start thread if I was to come up with a way to generate one index pulse to Linux CNC for every two encoder index pulses, I wouldn't be able to perform orientation between invocations of Linux CNC. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. I can estimate the belt length in CAD, but I like to double check that just to be sure because the belts can take quite a while to arrive. I have a piece of string cut to a length of an available belt. It's the uh, same length as what I estimated in CAD. Well, it's the closest available belt to what I estimated. And a template for the pulley made out of wood mounted onto the encoder. And just wrap the string around both pulleys and make certain that there's plenty of clearance for the drive belt. And then uh, there'll be even more clearance when the drive belt is moved over to the smaller pulley here. So it uh, looks like 390 uh, millimeters will be 
a good belt length. 